Okay, so we're going to add a photo upload component and we're going to get a bit of help with this and we're going to install a package that's got, well it's called ng2 file upload. Now ng2, and this can be quite concerning because it says the Angular 2 file upload directives, but this still works perfectly fine in Angular 10, <laughs> even though it's called Angular 2 file upload. And for some reason, they've never really updated a name. It, it does get some updates, but it's, it's relatively simple and it works fine in every version of Angular that's been released. And this is what it gives us. It allows us to drop a file into a drop zone and then we can use upload to go and upload the files. And this is the kind of thing that we're going to add in our application. So let's see what we need for this. Well, first of all, we need to install it. So we'll go ahead and do that in a moment. And what this gives us is an example of the markup that we can use in our template. And this is quite large. And so then if we take a look at an example of the TypeScript, then what we use here is we use a, a file uploader class. We have some properties for the drop zones that we have there. And then we create a new instance of the file uploader, give it some properties, and there's really not much else to it. We give it the URL of where we're going to send the image. And there's a few other options that we'll take a look at, but we'll use this as a starting point. And what we'll do first of all is we'll go back to VS Code and we'll install the package that we need. So we'll need to CD up and up again into the client folder. And let's just clear the screen here and we'll go ahead and install this into our application. And we get it installed, there's no problems. We're on version 1.4.0. Like I say, this package has been around for some time, but I guess just because it still works without any problems, nobody's made the effort to actually do anything to update it or even change its name to ngx, which is what most Angular packages have as their prefix now. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make use of this and we'll go back to our photo editor component HTML. And what we're going to do is add our uploader stuff underneath this. And what we'll do is we'll get a starting point for this and we'll take advantage of the demo markup they have inside here. Now what we want is from approximately, well not approximately, from exactly line 17, we're going to take this and we're going to copy all the way down to line 116. That's what we want to get into our clipboard. So from line 17 here, I'm just going to copy all of this and go down to line 116 and copy this into my clipboard and paste it into my components template. And this gives us a starting point. There's some things that we'll need to adjust in here and make it suitable for our application, but it's a good place to start from. And what they're also using is old icons from Bootstrap as well, glyph icons here. So we've got a few things to update, but that's absolutely fine. Let's go back and take a look at what's involved in the component file. And what we'll do, we won't copy any of this. We'll just type this in manually because We'll do things slightly differently in our component. But there is a module that we need to install for this as well that's not documented, it seems, inside there. So let's head over to our shared module. And what we're going to do is add a comma after the ngx gallery. And what we need here is the file upload module. And add a comma. And then I'll just go up to the imports and once again import this and say file upload module and we get this from ng2 file upload and this gives us the functionality we need and what we also need to do which is really easy to forget and will cause a problem if you forget is to add the file upload module into our exports here so now we have this we can make use of this so what we'll do is we'll open up our photo editor component file and what we'll do we'll add a property called uploader and this is going to be a type of file uploader and we'll add a property for has base drop zone 
over and we'll set this equal to false and what we'll also need is the URL of our API here as well so we'll add our base URL and we'll set this equal to our environment dot API URL and that should be enough and what we'll do is we'll create a method inside here and we'll call it initialize uploader and inside here we'll add the configuration we need for this so what we'll do we'll say this uploader equals new file uploader and inside here what we can do is give this its configuration properties so the URL we need is this.base URL plus and then we add users and then we use the add dash photo as that's the endpoint that we're going to be sending this to we also need to add our auth token in here because this is not going to be using or going via our HTTP interceptor this is kind of separate so we need to add our auth token inside here and we'll say bearer and what this means is we need to go and get our user from our account controller so what we'll do is we'll inject our account service in here and we'll say account service and what we'll need to do is add a property for our user of type user and inside the constructor here we'll need to get our user out of the observable so what we'll do we'll say list dot account service and we'll say current user dollar and then we'll use the pipe and then we'll take and then we'll take one and we'll subscribe and we'll say the user that we get back from this and then we'll say list.user equals user and this gives us access to our current user of course so then what we can do is say bearer and then we can say plus this.user.token then we have a property to say is html5 and we'll set this to true we'll then specify the allowed file file types that we're going to allow and what we're going to set this to is just image so only jpegs pngs etc there's a property we can set saying remove after upload as in do we want to remove this from the drop zone after the upload has taken place and we're going to say true for that and we'll say auto upload is false we're going to make the user click a button and we can also set the max file size here and what we'll do is set it to what the maximum that Cloudinary will take on a free account which is 10 megabytes so we'll say 10 times 1024 times 1024 and that's our uploader configuration but we do need to add a little bit more configuration to the uploader as well so what we want to do is we want to say this dot uploader and we're going to target on after adding file and we'll say we'll pass in file as a parameter and we need to specify file dot with credentials equals false otherwise we're going to need to make an adjustment to our API course configuration and allow credentials to go up with our request we don't need to because we're using the bearer token to send our credentials with this file and then in our ng on init we can say list dot initialize uploader so what we also need to do is provide this with a method so that we can set our drop zone inside the template and what we need to do for this is we need to provide it a method called file over base and this takes an event of type any and what we'll do is we'll say list dot has base drop zone over equals e for the event and that's the configuration we also need to specify what we want to do after the upload has successfully uploaded so still inside our initialize uploader after the configuration setting here what we'll do is we'll say list dot uploader and we'll say on success item and inside this method then we've got some required parameters here so we'll need to pass in all of these so we'll say item and then response then status and then headers and we'll add the arrow function and we'll check to see if we've got a response and if we have then we're going to say const photo equals 
and we need to pass this response out of the JSON response. So we'll say pass and then response. And then what we can do is say list.member.photos.push and we'll add our photo into our photos array. So this takes care of our component code and what we'll take a look at in the next lesson is what we need to do inside the template. So we've now completed the component side of this and there's a fair bit of logic inside here now and we'll just go back to our photo editor components, the template, and we'll just tidy this up as well. Now we only need or want one drop zone so I'm going to remove one of those straight away. And we do have this property inside our components so I'm just going to remove a letter and see if we can get rid of the error that way and that kind of worked it took a few attempts but we've got rid of the error now and we've got the event so when we do drop a file into here we call that file over base and pass in the file into that event we've got our uploader and we'll adjust the class here to something that looks slightly better so what we'll use is we'll say this is a card and we'll have bg-faded and we'll give it a paragraph or padding equal to three or padding of three all the way around. We'll say text-center, we'll say mb-3 and we'll say my-drop-zone. And we'll also give it an icon, so we'll say i and we'll give it a class equal to fa and fa-upload and we'll say fa-3x to make it a bit bigger and what we'll do is we'll just call this and say drop photos here and then what we'll do we'll just keep going down and we'll make some adjustments to each of these areas where we can make it look a little bit better because if we go across and take a look at where we are and we click on edit photos then we're all a bit squashed up inside here and we've designed the drop zone which is fine but everything's a bit squashed and what we want to do is style this a little bit better we should be able to test the image going in though at this stage and if we pick an image and let's just grab another image and drop it in what we can see is we get the name and the size of the file but all of this is so squashed up we're going to make some more adjustments to it and we'll also change the title here to add photos and we want to give some margin top to move it down a bit as well so we'll say margin top of three and let's go down again to the column of MD9 and what we'll do we'll only display this column if we actually have an image so what we'll do is we'll say a dash ng if and we'll check the uploader so we'll say uploader and we'll add the optional chaining and we'll say Q again optional and length and if we have this then we've got something in our uploader and then we can display what's inside here. So if we go take a look then and edit photos, we'll see that we're missing now the column on the right. And what we don't want really is the progress of the individual files. We'll just have an all purpose upload all down here. So what I'm gonna do is remove three of these table columns. I'll get rid of progress, status and actions, but we'll keep the name of the file and the size of the file. So we'll keep this table row and we'll keep this row but all of the other ones we'll remove. So I'll get rid of this TD and we'll get rid of this one and we'll get rid of the buttons inside here and all of these can go and let's keep going down. So we've got our queue progress here and this gives us a progress bar and this is okay, we'll keep this, that's fine. And we'll keep our buttons and keep the functionality inside here. And what we'll have is just these three upload all, cancel all or remove all. And what we'll need to do is adjust these icons here. And we'll say this is FA and we'll say FA dash upload. And for the 
cancel one, we'll say FA FA dash ban, and for the trash we'll use FA FA dash trash. And all of this can stay the same as well. Let's see how we're doing at this moment in time. So I'll click on edit photos again, bit cleaner now, and I'll just go and grab another photo and drop this in. And a bit better, but it's still a bit squashed because of the text we see by the choose file here. So we want to get rid of this text where it says no file chosen. And also what we want to do is if we drag a photo over here, it'd be nice to see this highlighting to show that we're actually doing that. So we'll need to add a little bit of style here as well. So what we'll do, we'll head back to VS Code and we'll go to our photo editor component CSS to do this. And what we'll do is we'll say image and image dash thumbnail. And we'll give our images a height of 100 pixels and a min width of 100 pixels as well. And we'll need to make this important. This is just for our images in the photo editor. We're just going to tidy these up at the same time. And I don't need the semicolon there if I'm using the important flag. And we'll give this a margin dash bottom of two pixels. And then what we want to do is target the file over class. And the file over class, what we're using inside here, if I just go up, this is the class that we need to target to say that we're hovering over our base drop zone. So I'm just going to copy this and we'll head to the CSS again and we'll use this class. And what we'll do, we'll just give it a border and say dotted and we'll say three pixels and we'll make it red. And then what we want to do is get rid of that nasty text that's by our input. And what we can do here is specify input type equals file. And we can say the color is transparent. And that will just hide the text inside there. And that's what we can do to get rid of that. So now we need to test if it's working. We've done the work. So what we want to do is add an image. So let's go and give this a go. And I'll drag another image inside. We can see the image name, we can see the size. And let's give the upload all button a go. We can see the progress bar. And what we want to see is this drop into our images here. It might take a little while depending on how Cloudinary is behaving. And in my case that did take a, a few seconds. For some reason it's not as quick as it normally is, but we can see the photo dropping in there. And I am duplicating photos somewhat inside here, but that's fine. We can see our photo inside here, and if we refresh, then edit the photos, then this has persisted. What we can also do is go to matches, and for the time being what we can do is click on our own profile, and we can click on the photo gallery, and then we can start going through the different images that we have inside our photos collection. And that all works just fine. Cool. What we want to do next is take a look at the other functionality that we want here, which is the ability to set a photo as the main photo and also delete a photo. And we'll take a look at those coming up.